All right, what the hell makes a great dive bar? Is it the smell? Is it the bathroom? Is it the jukebox? We're going to run down what makes a great dive bar today. We also are going to give our recommendations. So Jason's got a bunch that he loves in New Orleans. I'm going to tell you about a few places here in Houston. And you're going to realize dive bars, it's something we know a little bit about. And every great dive bar needs a kick-ass jukebox. And you're looking at two guys or listening to two guys right now that will spend a hell of a lot more time than they should picking out great songs. We're going to run down top five favorite or most interesting dive bar songs that we're going to pull out of a jukebox. Let's go! It's time to Welcome everybody into episode 15. It's Play Pants. My name is Rod Ryan. His name is Jason Ginty. Two weeks ago, I had a little 1970s wood paneling behind me probably broadcasting in the chair that I was conceived in. Oh. And now, I, I mean, I'm, I'm literally, I'm in Buffalo Bill's basement broadcasting from the well. That's my vacation. Now I look at you, you're on vacation and you're in beautiful Destin, Florida. Uh, quite a, a bit different than what it looked like while I was on vacation. Yeah, dude, like, well, actually, I'm, I'm not in Destin. I'm like, if you're heading from New Orleans, you head towards Destin, I'm like a yeah. three hour drive. I'm in Pensacola Beach, Florida. Okay, it's like the poor man's destiny. Now, are the sands the same? Is it that white sand and yeah, but everyone clear goes, water? Beautiful. Everyone goes to Dest and spends twice as much money and has to deal with like a billion people. And Pensacola Beach is not half as far of a drive from New Orleans and not as many people. Still got bars if you're into all that shit. And the beach is badass. You're not dealing with a bunch of goofballs at the beach. So we've been coming. Why don't people for- go to Destin then? I don't understand. I don't know, but don't tell them about Pensacola Beach, please, because then it gets full, and then I got to deal with more people. I got to find a new place to go. You know, six-hour drive to Destin from New Orleans because of the traffic. Usually, it's about a five-hour clip from New Orleans. Okay, and you're in Pensacola. It's a three-hour drive from New Orleans. Door to door, man. I'm here in three hours. I don't even stop. I mean, there's a Bucky's, but I blow right by that bullshit. <gasps> and uh, how do you blow past Bucky's, dude? How do you not blow past Bucky's? You have a kid. Your kid doesn't lose his mind over Bucky's? He doesn't give a shit. What's he going to stop it? It's a Stuckies with, like, a beaver. It's a gas station. My kid <laughs> goes ham at Bucky's. <laughs> she sees it. She points out. Now, it's a little bit bigger here in Texas, I think. Sure. So, and there's one not too far. I mean, we, we go. Like, it, that. that's kind of a thing that we might do on a Saturday morning. Just let mom sleep in. Let's go. Right. Boom. Let's go to Bucky's. And my kid loses her mind. I mean, she absolutely thinks it's the coolest thing in the world to go there. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't no, know what it is. Blow right on by it, man. My kid's like, let's go to the beach. I want to surf. He's okay. just a, he's a beach nut. And so am I. I like to sit on the beach and just count the waves. Everyone's like, how come you don't say much when you're at the beach? I'm like, because I talk all the time. Why am I talking on vacation? <laughs> I'm literally not saying a word for three days. And I'm just counting the waves, man. I don't care. So. If you can tell by the room, if you watch this at Play Pants Pod on our YouTube channel, you got to see where I'm at. Okay, we're we're with some friends, my buddy, uh, or my uh, my kids' friend, who they went to like preschool with, and they've gone to school. Well, we became friends with their parents, and uh, our sons are the same age. They go to they have a surf camp, so we teach the kids how to surf. It's freaking cool as shit, right? So I said, well, look, you guys are going, we're going, why don't we just rent a place together, two bedrooms, the whole nine yard. It's a, it's a nice little beach house. So we kind of walk in and there's a big room with a king bed and a nice kick-ass shower. Uh Oh, and then there's got to divvy the place up. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I walked in, I took a look at that. I went, fuck yeah, I want that one. And I went, no, not going to be that guy. And I went right to the other room with a queen bed. Now behind me, Rod. You can't really see it, but I'm not going to move all my shit because it's all going to fall down. I've got it stacked up like it's on a bunch of dominoes. I see some big mouth sharky looking thing. Dude, that is a a chair that's like a beanbag chair, and it's in the shape of a fucking big shark mouth. I thought that was kind of cool, actually. Okay, so I'm in here and I got a queen bed, me and the wife, right? I'm thinking, all right, going to the beach. All right. Yeah, me and the wife. And then the kid usually sleeps like downstairs on the couch. I don't know. They've got an apparatus here, dude. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera. Again, you got to see this on YouTube. Mom and dad are on the bottom, kids on top in the built-in bunk. Dude, there's a bunk bed, so it's it's a queen-size bed down below, typical queen, and then up over where your head would be, going across the uh, queen-size bed up high is a single twin-size bed, 
and it's a bunk bed. So if you no thought, lovey-dovey. if you thought <laughs> Jason's, if you thought Jason's little Jake was going to put on his mining helmet and go spelunking, it ain't happening because the boy is sitting a foot and a half above my head. Yeah, dude, you just keep the snake in its cage and uh, have a nice family sleepover. Dude, next time I'm going right for the king size suite. I'm not going to be the nice guy. So anyway, it was cool. It's my whatever. It's fine. You know, you got to do what you got to do. So a lot of tugging going on at my point when I get a few minutes myself. Um, but yeah, this beach house, Rodney, I've learned a few things like, you know, when you go to a beach house, of course, everyone always decorates with beach shit. There's seashells on the wall. There's sailboats behind me, you know? Yeah. So this is all rental stuff. Everything that I'm rental looking stuff. at. Again, if you're, you should really be kind of maybe checking this, uh, this, intro part out on our youtube channel so it's all rental it's great it's a beautiful fucking place it's it's wonderful right but you know it's like it was decorated by like somebody's mom like like i found out just by and you're gonna like this and we'll, we'll get moving here in a second but i just gotta show you what i'm dealing with for this week it looks like flora florida threw up in there it's exactly what it is like everyone who owns a condo that's like you don't have to put all the seashells we get it we're at the beach but people seem to do that for some reason so i learned something important uh rod uh, God no longer has to bless you when you sneeze. I got a tissue box that says bless you on it. Oh, that's wonderful. So, so everyone's covered for the whole week. No bless yous. I it's don't, just, I don't need the box any, has got it. Box has got it. God, take the time out for a week. Cause if I got to sneeze, the Kleenex box has got a uh, little bless you on it. So you can tell that's kind of the place I got going. But what is badass, dude? is they've got downstairs, and I don't know why you would ever put this in a rental. Remember back in the day, you used to go, and I don't know if it was the same everywhere, but I know up in New York, it was that way when we were growing up. You went to Pizza Hut, right? And everyone went to Pizza Hut, big red roof thing, you know, Pizza Hut, get your, get your pizza on. But they always had like a uh, tabletop Ms. Pac-Man Galaga. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You'd sit down, and it was on the tabletop. So you'd be looking down on it. They got one of those here in this damn apartment. Is it a multi-cade where it's got multiple games on it, or is it like, just no? It's four hundred games. It's got you click through the games, but dude, we've been yeah. fucking yelling. We're screaming at each other, adults and kids alike, playing Ms. Pac-Man, Galaga, Cubert, all the stupid video games. I mean, I've I've been on the beach like twenty minutes in three days, man. I've been playing video games and I've been jumping <laughs> on bunk beds and getting blessed by Kleenex boxes. So, what does your kid think of those nineteen? 19- I think those are 84 80s. or 86 graphics. He loves Galaga. Like he'll whoop your ass in Galaga. Like that's his yeah. game. That's his game, man. He'll play I the think shit it's out of that. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, he's like, these graphics are shit, but the games are still fun. You're just shooting stuff. You're just shooting shit, man. At the end of the day, you're just shooting stuff and people love doing that. So, but yeah, dude, this place is badass. And, uh, but it's been raining a lot. And then one more thing, cause I'm going to keep talking about my damn vacation is, you know, are you familiar with the Blue Angels flying group? Okay, it's part yeah, of the United of States Navy. The trick, the, the ones in the uh, Van Halen Dreams video. Okay, yep. if you want to get a good look at that. Um, they go around the country and they do their trick flying and their jets, part of the United States Navy. They're based out of Pensacola, Florida. And they go around every weekend. They've probably done it in Houston and they go all over the country, right? Doing these air shows on the weekends. Absolutely. Once a year, they do one here, okay? And normally, you do the, they do these uh, air shows at your air, air base in your city, okay? Not in Pensacola, baby. You stand on the beach, and they shut down the beach. There are no boats in the water, and there's nobody swimming. And the damn Blue Angels jets are flying by about, I don't know, 200 yards above the surface of the water, and they're blasting around. And you're up and down the beach with the Blue Angels, and they're doing the circles and the the, the formations and all the shit. Oh, that's badass. I'm sitting on the beach, dude. And these, like this morning, I'm out fishing with my kid and they're doing practice runs. And it's like fucking Top Gun buzzing the tower. Talk to me, Goose. And they're blowing right over top of our heads as we're fishing. I'm telling you, man, that alone is worth the price of admission in this place, man. Like, I don't even give a shit about planes. I don't, but now I do. Because I've been coming the last few years when they fly the uh, Blue Angels here, so badass. And what's great is it's free. <laughs> They're just this, flying over your head, man. There's going to be somebody that listens that blows me up on this, and this will piss somebody off. Just because I because I had this amazing opportunity when I lived in New Orleans, I had the opportunity to ride to yeah. cover it as a media coverage, and I said no, I couldn't do it. I'd get it's, sick. 
Oh, I, I didn't want to throw up inside there. I think, I think old man Eddie Edwards did it from the country station. Yeah, and yeah. Eddie, I love you. I, he did it. I, I just, I couldn't do it. I said no. I'm no. sure the instrumentation. I'm sure all that stuff is very expensive. That's not for me. I, I would have loved to have talked about that for the rest of my life. You're right. But I pushed out, and I have jumped. I jumped out of a plane a couple times. So I've parachuted before, but that whole barrel rolling and upside downing and g forcing yeah. uh not for me i yeah. i couldn't do it i would have to really think about it because as much of a pussy as i am with heights that oh, would come be on. you couldn't do that could you but i like going fast and i love all that shit so that part of it i like is once if i'm upside down and i'm like what the? i'd be crying and screaming and i'd be a and you'd have to videotape it because you'd want to see your face the whole time you're yeah. in it you'd have to well, see your face it was it was like one of those NFL, you know, pregame shows in the morning and they're doing right, a salute right. to the military and Shannon Sharp, <laughs> Hall of Fame tight end. Oh, uh, he's in the back of one of the Blue Angels and they're just busting his balls because yep. he went in and out of conscious consciousness. Yeah. He lost consciousness pro, con probably three times, two times for sure. Uh, he just he was in and out. And so great. It's it just so everybody great. does it. My problem was I would have been in and out, but I would have thrown up every time I came to or something. And I just, I, I didn't want, I didn't want to do it. I just, that kind of speed in that sort of business, I couldn't do it. And I know I'm a pussy. I turned it down. I could have had a once in a lifetime opportunity to ride. Yeah. But you know what kind of shit you'd still be taking to this day if you'd have barfed in the back of a blue angels. I mean, we'd be calling you blue. We'd be calling I, you. Yeah. I mean, dude, right now I'd be giving you shit about it. So, I mean, I you, you, you probably made the right call. So anyway, that's where I'm at this week, Rod, and it's uh, it's great. I'm telling you, man, if you if the Blue Angels come to your town, wherever you might be listening, go check them out, man, because that shit is unbelievable. It, it gives you no, a whole new perspective on what precision is really about. I mean, you're you're hauling ass in these jets. So anyway, so Jason and I, we got we got emails going back and forth, and we're pinging back and forth. And even while he's on vacation, he's like, hey, you know, hey, I saw this, and and I saw you know this. We're looking for stuff to talk about during the podcast. Um, I sent you a uh, a trailer for the Val Kilmer movie. Did you watch oh, it? Dude, I love it, that dude, man. And it looks amazing, true. right? It looks horrible, though, too. It looks like it's going to be brutal, but it looks great. It looks great. So we throw around like, hey, maybe we could do like, you know, top five Val Kilmer movies. We're going to have the same five movies. So yeah, it's, not <laughs> worth, it's not worth it. It's like, OK, well, Tombstone and The Doors and, you know, although Tombstone. I did. Heat, Top Gun. I mean, Heat. everyone's going to have the same five, right? Heat is so fucking great. And then um, the one you people always forget about is Real Genius. If you've never seen Real Genius, when he goes to college and he's super smart, that is a great one. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah What's yeah. number five on my list? Real uh, Genius. Real Genius, The Doors. <laughs> and then um, the one that a lot of people don't realize he was in, and it kind of was an underground thing, was the one called uh, Wonderland when he played John Holmes, the porn star. Did you ever see that? Yeah, he did good in that. I saw oh, that one. That was so good. And then uh, what was it? Willow. I never saw Willow. Nope. Um, and then The Saint was another movie. So anyway, go, go. Not, you, you've been given your homework. Well, go down that Val Kilmer. So we, we, we said, well, maybe we'll talk about Val Kilmer. Well, it looks like we just did. Guys, go look there up. Go. I think it's just called Val. All right. Yeah. V-A-L. And he was the first of all of these. Think about like a, a movie star that's in their 60s. So you have him. You've got Kevin Bacon. You've got... Um, Jeez, who else was it? Sean Penn. And Val Kilmer, for some reason, was the very first one to have a video camera. And he videoed everything. Brilliant. And he's got thousands of hours of stuff that he wanted to put out there. And it looks really, really cool. Yeah. Then we, you know, we go on to this topic here. Maybe we could talk about this. And then I tripped on this today. At the time of this recording, when we do this, today is 7-7. Seven, seven. Think right. about that for one second. It is National Dive Bar Day. I've always said that everybody should have some sort of a signature drink. And I'm not really an alcohol guy. I'm more of a, you know, I'm a ham and egger. You know, I drink beer. Right. But our buddy Briggs turned me on to a drink years ago. And it was the seven and seven with a double lime. That's where the date came from, dude. So oh, really? Dive bar, dive bar day is not on accident. It's Seagram seven. Seagram seven. Uh, they're the ones that pushed it through. So they got one of those national days and, you know, whatever. There's 1,500 national days, I found out. Right. And right. today is 7-7. Seven, seven. So my signature drink, if I was to order one, would be a 7-7 seven and seven with a double lime. And it, it, it's a delicious drink. But 
I started really thinking about dive bar day. And I may have tripped on something that you and I could possibly be considered experts on. There's not one topic that we've had on this podcast yet that I think we know more about than dive bars. I mean, music, I'll give us a fair, fair shake at, although the more we do these top 10 lists about music, the more and more I realize I don't know shit about music. But music you know? is going to play into dive bars, though, because music is a huge part of a dive bar. Absolutely. And really, if you think of all the shit that you and I have come up with together or separately over the years for radio, almost every good idea that's ever been on the radio, on, on radio stations from me or you, has literally become, was written down on a dive bar's napkin. Yeah. Had we saved all those, can you imagine what that would look like today? I mean, for real, this- no joke. But the dumb shit that I've written out on a napkin in a bar, too. I mean, yeah. I've made contracts. Who's getting married first? You got to pay up. I mean, we've had we've Everything. last man standing. Everything. We've come up with the dumbest shit ever. But there were a couple of things on these dive bar napkins that turned out to be okay. Um, if Free Beer Friday may have been on a, a dive bar napkin, which I still do to this day. I started that in New Orleans, Easy. and I'm still doing it to this day. It's going on 24 years that I'm doing Free Beer Friday. Silly. Yeah. 21 years, whatever. Um, I, what I wanted to get started, because we will turn this into a top five. I can, I can spin this into a top five, and I do want to give some recommendations, too, because you could, you could talk, and I could even speak to a couple of places on, on New Orleans, because there's so many great dive bars there. But there's some great dive bars here in Houston. Houston right. lacks a little bit of the history, obviously, what New Orleans has. But we have a couple of great dive bars. But I wanted to, to rip into it and break it down a little bit. I started making some notes. And I said, man, what makes a great dive bar? Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different things. But just the, the most important thing for me, and I, if, if I, I'm making these lists over here. What's the most important thing? Do you agree that the place has to be old? It has to have some history to it. I can't think of a new dive bar no. that is super comfy, super awesome. It's got to be old as shit, doesn't it, to be a great dive bar? I think, yeah, it's not going to be a strip mall usually. You know what I mean? It's just not going to be that. It's not, not going to be. Yeah, that. Applebee's. It's, it's, <laughs> it's got to be an older building. It looks, and it's got to be. It's not going to be a chain. It's not going to you know, oh god no, it can't be a chain and it's got to be um dirty to a point. It can't That comes can't, with age. That comes it, with age. It's got to have that old I'm not talking stinky bar smell. I'm talking just an old smell to it. It, it doesn't have to be bad. Just musty a little bit, maybe a little. Those little, are all things that play into a little bit of, you know, the most important thing. It's got to have some age to it. It's, it's got to have it doesn't have to have a great history, but it's got to be old, right? I mean, old it can't building. be new. No, 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 there's no such thing as a new dive bar because everything's fucking new. I mean, you can bring in a bunch of old shit, but a dive bar is a dive bar because there's been generations of people drowning their sorrows yes. at a dive bar. That's one of the first definitions for a dive bar. It's, it's not a place where you go and like, hey, let's go dancing. No, nah, you're not, probably not going to do that at too many dive bars i like to equate it to what i always call an old man drinking bar where are we going it's an old man drinking bar you know and it's jason and i used to seek them out i mean that's where we wanted to go neither one of us were ever really drawn to the clubs no you know we're, we no. were never ones to go out and dance i mean yeah we go out chase tail go to all these different places but if we're gonna go out and if we're gonna get anything done Meaning, if we're going to really drink and get into it, we're going to sit around, we're going to argue about who's the greatest guitar player of all time, right. we're going to be sitting at an old man, dungy, dingy, smelly, <sighs> boy, they used to smoke a lot in here, this bar. You can't get rid of that smoke. No. You, the thing about dive bars that was the worst part is because they were so fucking smoky, and I always hated smoke. Yeah. But- you put up with them to be in that cool bar, you know? But most of those places, it's, you can't get it 
out of the walls now. There's there's no amount of cleaning or no. sanitizing that can happen. There's always going to be that smell of six million cigarettes smoked and just darts going down in that place. Oh no, there's I mean just in, in like stains of burn marks on the bar yes. itself, you know. Um, okay, if a dive bar is gonna have this smell and it's gotta be in an old building, the bartender in I'm not talking about dude bartenders. I'm talking about that chick behind the bar. She's got to be, she can't be hot, but she right. can't be, she's got to be exotically, uniquely interesting to look at. If that's a, if that's a way to describe a human being, you don't want she smoking might, hot. She might, she might be a little older. She may have been a smoke show back in the day, but now she's been in it so long. She's almost a little mean. No, no. She's you want almost, her a little mean. She's almost a little mean behind the bar. Um, a little bit. Not, 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 a, not a dick, but like giving you shit. She'll fuck with <laughs> you a little bit. Like where, where like when you, you know, after you have all seven, eight shots of SoCo, you're like, I'm taking her home, right? Because that's what everybody does. Every dude does. I'm taking her home. And then you throw a few, few little softballs at her and she just shuts you right the fuck down and goes, sit down, stupid. And no, it's not happening. And then you're like, I like you even more now. Okay, I'm going to morph. I'm going to morph the two together. Her mom is mean as a fucking snake, but the daughter works there and she's kind of hot. You can tell mom used to be kind of hot, but she's mean because dad started everything, but mom kind of runs everything now. Yeah. And the daughter did some smoking back in the day. She's the one that you're talking about. I'm talking about mom works during the day and she is fucking mean. Okay. Yeah, no, that's she's okay. Mean. The daughter takes over and then she's kind of cool and all the guys are hitting on her, but the mom, no, no line is going to work on her anymore. Maybe dad's not around. It's just them running the place, yeah. but there's always a mean old lady behind the bar at, at, a, at a dive bar. And what's worse is like that one night you go there and you're like, oh, this fucking bar is the best. This is so great. And then maybe you go out a little bit earlier for whatever reason, or you stop by for a couple of beers. And you're like, dude, no, the, the bartender, she's hot. She's hot. And you're talking about how great the bartender is and how cool she is. <laughs> you walk in and then the mom's working you're like, fuck. And mom's then your like, yeah. shit. And she's it's got a Tuesday. Dude, I told you Tuesday. Mom works Tuesday night. Oh, <laughs> the daughter's God, got damn. the kid. The daughter's got uh, the kid. Mom works on Tuesday night. Damn it. Kids. Uh, kids. She's so uh, mean. She's so kids. mean. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then, so, <laughs> so you've got your bartender, you've got the smell, you've got the old building. Is the, the beer coming from a can, Jason? It fucking the beer's better, coming from a can, right? It, it better. There be, there's going to be draft. There's going to be like three choices oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for draft. That's it. It's not going to be good shit. Back in the day, you had three choices for draft. That was usually it. The cans, you better be drinking out of a can. If you're drinking out of a you bottle, man. You're drinking out of a can, and it might even come out of a cooler <laughs> behind the bar. But not like that... the door, not the cool new modern. No, no, actual, no, no. Like, I'm talking about a cooler. <laughs> fucking lift the lid, go digging around in there. Fucking ice is cold, and then just got a cigarette, dude, all the ashes and, burning off the end of it. Dude, an old Coleman cooler back yep. there, and then yep. that's where your beers are coming out. But everybody's like, man, that cooler still works great. This is the coldest beer ever. Always dive good. bars have this insanely cold beer and then you always and they and it's cheap and it's cheap it's it has to be cheap. cheap it has to be cheap if it's expensive it's not a dive bar it's not a re it's it's a it's a poser dive bar if the beers are expensive yes you're not in a dive bar you're in a fake dive bar there's a difference there that shit better be cheap you know you're looking at two 250 three bucks a beer maybe i don't even know what beers go for anymore i just throw money in the bar and walk away <laughs> now there's gotta be shit all over the walls but old that, shit old shit like there you has to be everywhere you look it's like that is a that's a 1982 love you blue earl campbell oiler <laughs> schedule sponsored <laughs> by bartles and james right. and it's faded because the window hits it every day you can barely see it but they never took it down. Mm -hmm. Why did that poster ever come down? Because it's awesome. Because it's awesome. They're like, it got to a point where they're like four years down the road. They're like, well, you know, that thing's a fucking classic now. I mean, you might as well leave that bitch up. Or you got like an Archie Manning style New Orleans Saints <laughs> helmet. And the dust is so thick on top. You can't tell where the that helmet really begins. Little, that really little thin Florida Lee was on the helmet. <laughs> the one bar like a punter used to wear. Like just the one bar on the front where like even if you got hit in the face, you're dead. Yeah, that it's got to have shit hanging up 
uh, in the and it's always got to have it. And maybe it's, yeah, no, it has to. This has to be a, a given. Somewhere, usually behind the bar, maybe on the wall behind the bar, there's going to be an, a random picture of an old dude. It's just a picture. There's always a random picture of a dude. It's probably a guy who like was their, their first regular who died, yeah. or it's an old uncle, or it's a, or the first proprietor of the place. There's got to be a picture of an old dude on the somewhere back there. There's got to be one Agreed. picture. A Agreed. real picture. A real picture of a real human with a real story behind it. So Jason and I, we both, I, I don't know how we tripped on this movie back in the day, but it's called Beautiful Girls. And you thought it was like a, a rom-com or something. And it really is a really great kind of a dude movie. And it really is. Yeah. You wouldn't think it first. And they're hanging out at the bar and we use this reference all the time. It doesn't matter what bar you go to, but there's always, there's three, there's three guys at the bar. And it's Husky Pete, <laughs> Sammy B, and Rizzo. I don't care where Jason and I have gone, okay? It doesn't matter. Nope. At the bar is Husky Pete, Sammy B, and Rizzo. And they drink all day, and they drink all night. It's from the movie, and yeah. we've used that dumb line forever. Yeah, like, or you walk in, and like, oh, there's Sammy B. And you're like, fuck, look at Rizzo. <laughs> he looks like shit. And you just start giving <laughs> names to people, man. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah, that movie really kind of explains it with drinking and old man dirty bars. Now, I kind of come at it from if there's if it's going to be a cool dive bar, there sure as shit better be a dartboard. A pool table is huge. OK, a pool table should be in there somewhere, maybe in the back. You know, there should be some sort of gaming fun Darts are easy. Um, pools. OK, air hockey could be in there. Old but school that style pool table. The problem with that pool table, Jason, right? It's the small bar one. Yep. You got to jam the quarters in there. Yep. And there's no fucking chalk. Okay. No, Cause no, somebody no. took the chalk and drew all over the ceiling tiles and the two sticks they have, you go to lay it out. It goes, it's warped to shit. It's curved like a boomerang. You can shoot around corners. Half the balls got little chunks taken out of them and shit, right? There's cigarette burns all over the, the perimeter of the pool. Absolutely. Table. And it's fucking great. Because once you get bombed, right, you're like, fuck, you want to shoot some stick? We'll play some nine ball, bitch. And then you start playing for quarters. <laughs> or you play for beers because me and you never really gambled. So it was always like, oh, I'll get the next round. And we sucked. The fucking pool game would take an hour. And guys would be fucking going, come on, you guys suck. Get off the table, bitches. Yeah, so maybe some sort of gaming in the dive bar, right? It's Absolutely. Something. Maybe there's a motorcycle or two out front at all times. At some point, there's always at least one hog out front. Not a bunch, but, though. You don't want it to no, be a no, fucking no, no, biker no. bar. I don't no, want to be dealing with that shit. It's just, that's it, a biker bar. A that's a biker dudes. bar, which plenty, which plenty of those are dives, but I do categorize biker bars and dive bars Different. Totally different. Yeah, totally I different. different. They are. I mean, if it's just a true, true biker bar, most of those are divey and they're awesome and they're great. And they're, I mean, you get on, you know, because I ride. So you go around and like my buddies know all those places. Right. So they go to all those places. Now, here's where, because we're going to get into the jukebox and that's where we're wow. going to start to get into a little top five action. That was, but I want to talk about, thing. I want to talk about like some of our personal favorites coming up too. But where are you at with the food in a dive bar? Because nobody's thinking that the dive bar is all that clean. And I'm not talking about the bag of uh, Chex Mix in the, oh. you know, over oh. there. You can buy, oh. you can buy the pub mix. Oh, um, wait. Oh, fuck. I forgot. No, 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 no. It's I not a we... dive bar unless there's that fucking goddamn jar of formaldehyde with those pickled eggs in them. Ugh. And I don't know what the fuck those are, and I've never had one in my entire life, and I never will. It ain't a dive bar, but it ain't got those fucking pickled eggs floating in it. And it's like a pink formaldehyde shit. Like, there should be eyeballs in there or something, Is that, right? I know exactly what you're talking about, and I'm thinking if, if anybody that is 40 years of age or younger knows what we're talking about. I mean, when was the, the last time you honestly saw that? that you're right. It was everywhere. It was absolutely yeah. everywhere. It was it was pickled eggs. They may have been quail eggs. What the fuck? What? <laughs> Why the f you're drinking? Oh, and then like some dive bars, 
throw some pretzels up on the bar and a little remember the wood wooden bowls little wooden bowls throw some nuts or some With you're gonna dig your hands in that shit. hands you're digging <laughs> your fucking hands in that you seen dive bars they're dirty <laughs> so food at a dive bar there's there's one there's one back uh did i ever take you to betty's on river road in north tonawanda i'm sure it, like betty you know who betty boop is yeah it, it was it's this red bar and it was my sister who has always kind of been a factory worker. Uh, they would all go there at the place that she worked before she worked for General Motors. They'd go to this bar, Betty's, and it was your classic dive bar because you went after work. Yeah. Because a big component, which I can't believe you didn't say something, and I just thought of it now. A huge component of a dive bar is drinking there during the day. And there's just got to be a little crack in the windows and that you can see that it's darker inside. It's always, always. shaded in there. Always. But there's got to be little areas that you see, holy shit, it's still daylight outside and I'm wasted right now. Little reminders. Those little sunlight cracks are reminders like, hey, you're fucking up right now. That's what those, <laughs> those little cracks are telling you, literally telling you, hey, man, guess what you're doing right now? You're fucking up. Or, but have fun. Or if, you, or, or if you work seven to three, you get to the bar at three, and now it's like eight o'clock. You're like, shit, it's getting dark. I've been here. This is bad. This it's is my bad, whole paycheck. Bad. So my sister would go to this par, bar, and I would go meet her and some of her workers, and it was just – that's where we grew up. Yep. You know, it, it, you go, you swing a hammer all day. You go, and you have a couple of belts after work, yeah, and that's gotcha. exactly what this place was. The bathrooms back in the day. It's not like that now. I just went, just to show you my love of dive bars, I just went to Betty's when I was at my mom's house, okay? Oh, nice. And it doesn't look quite the same, but it's still cool. It's still really cool in there. And, you know, they got those old, old Buffalo Bill, couple of things, just like I was talking about, love you, Blue, Earl Campbell. There's oh, Joe you know, Ferguson helmets. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, you walk in, hey, Juice, what's up, man? You know, he's looking good in your Bill's outfit. <laughs> Look at Rick um, James and OJ just arm in arm. <laughs> hey, guys, what's happening? <laughs> what could go wrong? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shit. They used to have, <laughs> in the men's room, it was all old vintage centerfolds oh, that were put up so like creepy. like fucking wallpaper dude yeah and i yeah. and i always heard that the, the the ladies room had the dude version of that oh jesus it did not one kid ever walk into that bar well for 25 years there were titties and no bottoms the whole deal nobody shaved there's mad bush everywhere you look the whole thing was plastered, dude, with centerfolds from Penthouse and Playboy back in the day. That's it the was glorious. That went away. That went away. Yeah. I don't think I don't think that plays now, does it? That, you know what? That brings up another point of a good dive bar, though. You just brought it up. The bathroom. If there's not the most ignorant fucking graffiti on the walls, carved, <laughs> written. I mean, it's got to be plastered everywhere in the wood. It's got to have wood stalls. It's got to be all fucked up. There's going to be just the dumbest graffiti. You got to have a dive bar. It's not a dive bar without shitty graffiti on the walls. It's not. It's totally. Yeah, not. you got. I mean, it's just kind of looking there. forward. You're looking forward to that bathroom really being shitty. <laughs> Gross. Yes. Yes. And I hate it. I hate that. I really. Hate it. But you know what? If it's good graffiti, I'll spend them. I'll, I will take. The, I'll, I'll be like in a museum standing there like I'm looking at the fucking Mona Lisa and I'll just lean in. I'm like, oh, that's nice. Ooh, that's pretty funny. I will walk the fucking room. If it's not real busy full of dudes, <laughs> I will walk the room and read some cool graffiti, man. That's the way it works. Like, a, a graffiti is, is key to the dive bar. Man, I think we've just painted the great picture of what a fucking great dive bar should be. Now, obviously, Rod, we're going to talk about this in a second, but that motherfucker's got to have a jukebox in it or else I'm leaving. Yeah, There's no sense in being in the place, okay? And, and, and I know we're going to talk about it. We got to take a quick break, but... We're going to approach a jukebox way differently than the average human being because of our jobs throughout our lives. And Correct. we'll get into this, but the jukebox is a fucking, it's the best and the worst when we show up in the same bar. You don't want to be in the fucking same place. It's so we're going to talk. So we're going to talk about here is here's five bucks. You can play any song you want. You're going to get to go and play five songs on the jukebox. That's going to be our top five. But after the break, uh, I want you to give some recommendations 
uh, about some dive bars. There's so many of them, though. I mean, I, obviously, I've got my favorites, too, spending all the time I did in New Orleans. Um, but I, I, I got some here for Houston, too. And there's some great dive bars. There's one really close to my house where I live now. And, uh, and I was just there. And it's just fucking awesome. Just it's, it's awesome. It's cement floor, dude. Oh. Garage doors. Garage doors are a great component of a dive bar. Garage, Garage doors, doors are cool. huge. Garage doors are cool. And the pickles in the uh, fucking formaldehyde. Those are my, oh, the pickles. Yeah, there's always a jar of pickles too. I forgot about that. Anyway, well. There's some sort of gambling. Isn't there some sort of a thing you can get in on? Have you ever seen like the jar of dice? There's always football squares. squares. There's yeah, yeah, some yeah. kind of a gambling component that, hey, you know, the derby's coming up. So we're, you know, we're throwing in bunny here, blah, blah, blah. There's always something going on. Yeah, okay. Handwritten sign and a jar of cash. Yeah, always. <laughs> oh, fucking jar of cash. Of just like this, a jar with dollars in it. All right, let's take a quick break. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, Lucky's <laughs> Pub West, how do you segue into this? Here, we're talking about dive bars, and this it's is too big. I want a dive bar. I would love to own a dive bar. My place is 10,000 square feet. It's you can't have 10,000 square feet of dirt. You can't. <laughs> it can't and, and it, it you have to keep that clean. You, dive it's, bars are small. That's the other component. Right. Dive it bars has, are small. It has you to be. You cannot small. have ten thousand square feet in a really nice kitchen and stuff. It's not a dive bar. I, I, you can't. But a dive bar is where you're going to end up at some point. But before you get to the dive bar, because dive bar always ended up being later in the evening, you're going to stop by Lucky's Pub West I-10 at Barker Cypress in Houston. Astros baseball getting good, man. Baseball's getting good right now. Over forty TVs. You can catch. Damn near all the games, man. And the NBA finals are on right now. It's freaking great. Um, they got great game day specials. The food is absolutely incredible. You got you to gotta try the pizza. It's the best pizza on the best side. The wings, delicious burgers, and, of course, those famous Philly cheesesteak egg rolls. And steak night every Thursday night. So what you do is you listen to the podcast, and then you head on over to Lucky's, and you get some meat up in your mouth. Check out the Facebook page for details for steak night every single Thursday night. And I'm just getting word right now that uh, possibly bringing back the formaldehyde eggs. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, maybe, maybe that will come soon to Lucky's pub West. Always an ice cold beer at a fair price. See dive bar principles at Lucky's yeah, that's, pub. That's a line that we stole from the, from the great dive bars. I, talked about my bar on the air and i mentioned husky pete rizzo and sammy b and there are regulars that go during the day and they thought i was talking about them i didn't know this until i went to senior or i went to ditch day which used to be senior skip day oh and the one guy comes up and he's like yeah i heard you talking about us on the air you know you're gonna be old someday <laughs> jesus <laughs> I'm like, bro i'm super happy you're here i wasn't busting balls <laughs> What? Oh, Sammy B, I love you. I love you coming in here every day. It's awesome. The big guys down there go, Husky Pete, what's up? <laughs> he goes, that's, I'm telling you, I swear to you. He goes, you know, you're going to get old someday. I'm like, dude, I wasn't busting balls. I'm glad Actually, you come in. Thank you. You know what? At some point in a couple of years, dude, you and I, we need, we need one more. <laughs> we're going to be those guys now. We're going to be those dudes at the dive bar at the end, man. Son of All right. Man. In five years, we're going to do auditions. I, but I got to work on it. I don't want to be Husky Pete, though. Okay. I'll be, I'll be Rizzo. I'll be Sammy B. I'm, I don't want to be Husky Pete. I got to get rid of some of this. Pretty sure I'm not going to be Husky Pete, man. I got a pretty good idea here. Or, but we could call you Husky Pete, and we would call you that ironically. Right. That could work. Like, I could uh, go with it. Here comes Husky Pete. Don't blow on him. He'll, he'll fall over, you know? Okay. My short shorts. Hey, guys. So, so how do you – I mean, I spent a lot of time in New Orleans. How do you approach – is there a best dive bar for you? There's so many of them. There's so many greats with the description that we just gave. Um, I, I don't know how you want to approach it. Like, what have you told – What you go to one dive bar in New Orleans. Start that way. Start there. You go can just pick one dive bar in New Orleans. You could pick a street and go, okay, give me the best five on this street. I know. Ultimately. So, I mean, if anyone I pick, I'm leaving a laundry list out yeah. on the floor because there's so many. I mean, you just walk down lower to Cater Street by the French Market in the French Quarter, right? And you've got like uh, the Abbey and you've got this new place called Santos and you've got all these bars that are just 
you're kind of like questioning, like, I might go in there, but I mm-hmm. might not go out. They're a little more like, Ooh, you know, um, you, you look at dive bars. I mean, there's a thousand of them in the city. So I just picked three very various bars. I mean, um, Snake and Jake's Christmas Club Lounge uptown. Snake and Jake's, you don't get there before 2 a.m. If you do, uh, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. And the the story was always, and I never was part of it, I never saw it, is if you show up completely naked, you drink for free. Now, I don't know how they get away with that. But I had always <laughs> heard that. If you And I've heard stories, you know, you always hear the stories. Oh, I, had, I was there one night, some chick showed up, she drank for so, free all night. That's a great, another, write this down. It's another great trait of a dive bar. There's great, because I said, it's got to have some history. It's got to be old. So the bar contains stories like that. And it's got to have those weird legendary stories. And Snake and Jake's is just an amazing, amazing place. Hot as bombs in the summertime. Um, old piano in the corner. And uh, I don't know if you were with me or what happened. You and I that? walked in late at night. Yeah. And the drummer from Alice in Chains, Sean Kinney, sitting there hanging out, chilling. And then he got up, walked out. And I'm like, I think that was the, and you're like, fuck, I think that, yeah, it was the drummer from Alice in Chains. And we just missed yeah. him by a whisker. And, I mean, it's just one of those neat bars that are so cool. They had little tables. You can sit over on the side. And we went there a lot of times to hang out. But the bathroom. I mean, if you (laughs) said that an important component of a dive bar is having a shitty bathroom, it looks like if you've ever seen like CBGBs, some of these rock, these famous rock clubs, it's that type of bathroom. It's disgusting. There's right at the walls. Every It's just brutal. It's crazy, crazy awesome. You know, I mean, all you're going to do is go in there and piss. If you got a shit, go home. You, that's oh. it. You're done. You're Your done. Over. I, don't think a, I don't think there's a stall. I don't think there's a door on the stall. No. Um, <laughs> no, the, bathroom, the, the bathroom is one of the worst ever. I think Snake and Jake's may be one of the best dive bars in America. Yeah. Because the Christmas lights are up all year round. Yeah. They're and shit. it works. The Christmas lights is what lights up the bar. That's it. It absolutely works. Everybody's good looking in that bar. That's a dangerous thing, right? It's always a dangerous thing. Um, and as, as you know, it's bad. As, as I'm sitting here talking, I'm thinking of other bars. So I could just, I mean, this could be an all day thing. Um, there's a great bar uptown called The Saint. It's on St. Mary Street. Um, cheap Miller High Life's. It's a badass bar. The jukebox is all full of like cool 80s metal and then like 70s cool shit. Like there's not, there's not going to be fucking journey in their jukebox. You know what I mean? Like, it's just fucking cool shit. And they got a small room in the back. They got like couches that are questionable. Like there's definitely been some children born out of that fucking (laughs) couches. There's, there's like some serious shit going on in some of these couches, but it's a great place, dark, dirty. Um, And then um, this other place that I go to occasionally, it's in the ninth ward of new orleans it's this little neighborhood joint and you go on thursday nights and they bring in these crazy funk bands and i'm not talking about you know bad i'm talking it's fucking unbelievably great music it's loud to see oh here's another thing about a dive bar that ceiling if it's over eight feet high ceilings it's not a dive bar <laughs> it's gotta yeah, have low ceilings, ceilings. <laughs> like you're yeah. like what the fuck don't tall no, no basketball players are walking in there right vaughn's in the ninth ward on Thursday nights, you go see the music and anyone who's anyone of a musician in New Orleans will end up wandering through there. It's hot as shit in there. Everyone is just bouncing. It's just, it's just this amazing funk jazz fusion music. And um, it's just bad. And then there's always speaking about food. They always got a pot of red beans and rice in the back. You just walk back there, scoop it up and it's delicious. Some of the best damn red beans and rice to keep your night going. You're drinking beers, hanging out. Vaughn's in the ninth ward. I mean, the alibi is on Bourbon Street. It was right around the corner from Rick's and the Gold Club and all those. I was going to bring that up, and I was going to ask you, because they have such great food there. Yeah. Is it yeah. still a dive bar? They got a yeah. full menu. I mean, they got a ton of beers. Is it still a dive bar? I think it is because the strippers, because, it, 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 you know, Bourbon Street, there's no closing. So when the strippers got off at 3 a.m., me and you, funny thing is we'd always find a way to kind of make it there around 2.30. Yeah, in the morning, and we're like three o'clock. You know, when oh, the, when the, here they come. Because that's when the A team got off. I mean, the the bars yeah. are open later than that, but the A team gets in. 
you know, you get the C team working during, you know, you get the C team working at noon. You right. got the B team working happy hour. And then the A team, meaning the hottest girls, they're going to start working at seven and they're mm -hmm. going to work, you know, until about one, two in the morning. And then they, you know, they make their killing and then boom. So the alibi, you're right. Two, two thirty. Jason and I just happen to be there around that time and we have a couple of beers and then here they come. They're, they're, they're walking in like a fucking conga line, like just coming off of work. And I'm like, this is great. This well, is awesome. And the great thing about it too is they felt no pressure in there. They're off the clock. They don't have to be on. There's not, yeah. and most of the dudes are just like, fuck, here come the girls. And there's only, only ever like 12 dudes in there and we're sitting there and they, you just sit there and you start chatting with them. Next thing you know, you're talking to strippers all night and I, you know, some things have happened. <laughs> we had some fun in there. That's all I'm going to say. But uh, yeah, no, that, that that I would think that counts as a very unique sort of dive bar. But I mean, dude, the list, I mean, you go to the dungeon, forget about it. That's that's not a dive bar, although the downstairs could be considered a dive bar, but that's got a that's got a theme to it. So I don't think your, your dive can have a theme, really. You know, the dungeon on Toulouse Street in New Orleans. <sighs> yeah, I, I mean, love. a theme is different and I'll almost and I, I'm not grading your paper, but when there's live music. I, I yeah, don't know. It, it seems true. like I'm almost like a music club. It's a little different than like an old man dive bar. I would put that in a separate category, almost like how I put like a biker bar. Like right. there's plenty of biker bars that are dive bars, but that's kind of their theme, isn't it? If they're a biker bar. Right. So but maybe this is more of a theme of things. So um, I'm mad because you didn't mention my lamplighter lounge the lamp out lighter. in Metairie. Well, here's the thing. And it's one of the components, one of the components of a great dive bar is having a fucking amazing neon sign, and the Lamplighter Lounge on Veterans in yep. Metairie, a big, huge Laverne and Shirley, a big sweeping L, and it's the Lamplighter, and it's sideways, and that was always one of my favorite places in. Metairie's little outskirts, just the, the first city outside of New Orleans. Before the you go sign, to the, the sign is bigger than the bar. No <laughs> joke. The <laughs> sign like overshadows the whole bar is really, really tiny. There's a pool table in there, awful bathrooms. They had a great jukebox. They yep. had food. Remember, they had a crock pot. Some dude just had a crock pot, old like grandma's crock pot in the back. And they'd have yep. something cooking. You can get some Rizzo, so, Sammy B, Husky Pete. They Husky Pete, they were always in there. They were always at the bar. And that, going back to our original conversation about napkins, you came up with Test Fest in the lamplighter. And then we sat there and you go, <laughs> dude, I got this idea, Test Fest. And we started going back. We created the whole thing. We had all the events. We got to do golf. We got to do this. We got to do that. We got to do <laughs> the, testicle this, the Testicle Festival. The Testicle Festival. The Testicle Festival was a celebration of men. And then it just, you know, it became Test Fest so that we could get some sponsors on board because you're not going to get these big name sponsors sponsoring right. a testicle festival. But we, we did it in one month. We did stripper bowling golf tournament. I don't know. Did we ride go karts? Did we, something. we did something manly like every weekend there were these big things that you, you could get involved with. It's fucking um, huge. And we, we invented, it was on one napkin. We were like, well, what about this golf golf? Fuck yeah. Golf. We'll get strippers though. We're throwing strippers, strippers all over the golf course, bowling, bowling for lap dances. Yes, we can do that. We can do this. We can do that. And we just came up with it over beers in a dive bar. I'm telling you, man, that's where all the good shit comes from. Is the lamp lighter lounge open? Still open. I drive by it occasionally and i'm like motherfucker it made it yeah, it's still there still oh, there now i don't know how because i don't think anytime i'd ever been in the place there was more than like 12 people ever i don't remember 12 people ever being in there yeah i, I was mean, in there a, i mean i was in there a hundred times i don't remember ever 12 people i don't remember waiting except for the crusty old woman behind the bar i don't remember waiting to get through like four or five people their orders for her to get my can of bud light <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. But no, the lamplighter was always, always just a brutal, brutal bar, but a great bar. But that, that is another great example of another dive bar. I mean, the list could just go on for uh, days for New Orleans. I mean, it's full of dive bars. We should. I, I should don't know any of the history of the lamplighter lounge, but it looked like it probably that sign, like you said, the sign, it, it's unbelievable how huge the sign is. The sign is huge, and then the place is kind of like a subway. <laughs> it's like it's you know, a subway franchise. It's, it's small. Just, it's very, very tiny. That thing had to be there at least in the 70s it was built, I would say, maybe even earlier. It had. I, I'm, I, was, I would guess late 60s with that sign, the way that it right. – the design of the sign, late 60s, early 70s, late 60s. 
It's almost um, like you want to go in there and go, hey, listen, if you ever fucking get rid of that sign, call me because I'll buy it. So, you know, I, I, it's just such a great sign. There's a bar here, and um, I got to give a shout out to uh, Adam Smasher, who uh, was on the radio. He moved from New Orleans to here, and he killed it at KRBE, and he, he kind of jumped around a lot of different places. When I moved here, he was one of the two guys that I knew here in Houston. And I called him up and I said, Adam, you got to take me out. And he said, I got you. I know what you need. And he took me to this place called the Roll In. R-O-L dash in. Nice. The Roll In with the sign built into the sign. It said like large TV. Like, you don't ever think they're going to come up with larger TVs or anything. Large TV. You want to let everybody know that you had a large TV in there. Dude, it was one of those... I, those back projected TVs, those really big boxy things. Yeah. The very first big TVs were these four foot tall, think of it like a jukebox, <laughs> these big <laughs> boxes. Those were called projector TVs. If you weren't fucking sitting dead on, no. you could not see shit from the sides. <laughs> no. That's what they were banking on, everybody going there to watch that big TV. It was a part of the built-in sign. It wasn't interchangeable letters. We've got a large TV here. Uh, the roll-in was right next to uh, some railroad tracks, so they incorporated shots when the, when the train went by. The meanest old fucking lady worked behind the bar. Perfect. Everything was in a can. And when I first moved here, you could still smoke in bars. They had these things on the ceiling that looked like tires, like these big black, like wheels spinning around, like NASCAR wheels. Those are smoke eaters. And they were always a little wobbly. And they kind of they they were kind of like a like a ceiling fan, but right. they were these uh, smoke eaters. It was the smokiest fucking bar ever. It was so disgusting in there. And I'm like, Adam. Yes, you brought me to the right place. Uh, it didn't That's make cool. it. It's, it's, it's no longer a, around, but you said that you would like the lamplighter sign, the roll-in sign. I'm driving downtown Houston, coming back from something, and I stop my car in the middle of the road. I'm like, holy shit. The roll-in sign is in the parking lot leaning against a fence. No way. And it's this other kind of Texas bar that also is not open, and the guy owned both of them. And that sign, I think, is still just sitting around out there. It's huge. What am I going to do with it? I was I, Somebody, I talked about it on the air. They said, make the dude an offer. He's a bar guy. He'll sell anything. Yeah. And I went, what am I going to do with this? Okay, like, I no longer have the kind of place that I'm dragging home bar signs and hanging them up in my house. I, right. What am I going to do with it? I don't know, but it's cool as shit to have. I want it. <laughs> so <laughs> what am I going to do with a giant neon lamplighter sign? Put it in my that's front yard? Huge. Dude, that's got to be, that would take up your whole living room. The lamplighter sound no, no, sign is huge. Too big for my house. I'd have to put it outside on the front yard. The lamplighter. Okay. So wait, you buy that sign and then you buy a place and you recreate the lamplighter again if you had to. <laughs> I mean, it's that kind of sign, dude. So the next time you come into Houston and what we do whatever we do, I will take you to a place because I want to show off a little bit that we've got some cool stuff here. I will take you to a place called La Carafe. It's the oldest bar in Houston. It's the building is 1800s. I Damn. think it has some sort of a record of it's been open as a business, not necessarily a bar, but it's been open as a business for the long, this commercial, it's been, it's the oldest commercial building in Houston. Nice. It's so old, dude. It'd be just, you know, you're going to walk in. It's like, okay, wow, this, you think you're in New Orleans. It's old all right i think they take cash the bar is wood people have been carving into the bar for years there's yeah. big gouges out of it and there must have only been one bathroom in there and with the changes that are made and the way that you know liquor license you got to make you got to adapt well you're landlocked you're in this old 1800s building 1847 shit they split the bathroom now, dude, I'm, I'm a bigger guy, you know. Husky I, Pete. Husky Pete cannot take a piss in there, okay? Anybody that's just a little bit wider than me, you're not getting in. 
They oh. made two bathrooms out of one. They had to build a little sink. They didn't even make a sink that small. Okay, you couldn't go buy a sink that small, not even a fucking RV sink. They had to build something just to get to code. Oh, Jesus. And the place, I guess it's very structurally sound. There's one thin little, th that's the thing that I know freaks people out. There's only one way up to the upstairs and it's this little, little stairway. I mean, it's just old, you know, people were not our size. Right, there's um, La Carafe is the coolest, it's the coolest bar we have here in Houston, and it's dive bar, great jukebox, uh, cash. It's it's awesome. It Perfect. is so great. You go upstairs. You don't even think that anyone's going to be up there. No one is, but there's a bartender working. I'm like, <laughs> you're just waiting for me to come up here. Um, that's, that sounds cool, though. I like that. Yeah, you would love it. That's so, a cool place. Like and then there's a kind of, there's some cool areas right around there, Main Street. There's there's a couple of really really great old time places. There is uh, the Alabama Ice House, which is an ice house, which is almost its own kind of bar, you know, sure. an ice house. But it's old. Uh, there's always a couple of bikes out there, and it's just been around forever. It's just got a great vibe to it. And right around the corner from my house, Bobcat Teddy's, dude. It's, I guess it's only been Bobcat Teddy's for the last couple of years, but I don't think they, I think they just changed out the sign and they just said, keep all your shit, put up your Bobcat. There's a Bobcat in there, like a nice. stuffed Bobcat. Um, and I think they just, it, dirty floor. I walked in and I said, oh my God, this I can walk there from my house. This is not good. No, that's bad. This is dangerous. Like I, Like one of the coolest dive bars in the city I can walk there. I can be there in five minutes. Oh, that's a But problem. it's great, though. But the jukebox is the key. Um, and there's so many places that I want to. There, there's some other places that are around here. The Heights, the area that I live in, in Houston, it's old. The, the Heights is old because it's exactly what it is. Just like the French Quarter is the highest area right. in, in the city of New Orleans, the Heights is called that because it was higher up area. So those are always, you know, the first settled areas. And... Uh, and there's there's a couple of, there's a bunch of old bars around here. There's one that I want somebody could maybe if you're listening, if you've been to Dan Electros, I just love the name of it. I want to go there. Uh, like I heard porn that's name. A, Dan Electros. Does it sound porny? Sounds like a porn name. I love it. Uh, who's this guy with a 10 inch cock? It's Dan Electro. <laughs> and the Shiloh Club is not far from here too. So I'm surrounded by a bunch of dive bars, but your list is much more difficult just because of the age of New Orleans. Is Molly's Pub a dive bar? Depends on which one. Molly's is the market where you get the uh, uh, the iced coffee drink. Yes. There. Yeah, that because that's got a great jukebox and it's old men. It's Sammy B, Rizzo, and Husky Pete. I think they live there. I do. Yeah. It's, smell, it's got that old smell. Um, oh, before we talk about jukeboxes and music, let me tell you a story about a jukebox from the outside looking in. I'm there one day, right? And, and this this it, jukebox is full of like, great jazz and funk and a lot of cool old shit in it, right? At Molly's, uh, it's on Decatur Street, right near the French Market. And I'm in there one afternoon day drinking because that's the best drinking. And uh, it's a CD player jukebox. So it's got like probably 200 CDs in the thing, right? So the guy is in there to repair it. So it's, it's broke. So I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Maybe he'll fix this real quick. It's usually a wire or something stupid and then we'll move on. He fucking opens the door, dude. And all you hear is, no, 200 CDs. Cause it's all on that spinning mechanism and they're all like put in mm -hmm, perfectly. Mm -hmm. They're all laying at the bottom. Of, they're, they're spilling out onto the floor, into the bar. Oh. And the guy, the guy standing there and he's just, his shoulders drop and he starts shaking his head. He's got 200 CDs and you got to line them up perfectly with each number. That dude's day has just been made for him. I saw a jukebox empty at CDs on the floor at Molly's. And I just, I looked at the dude, I go, you want a beer, man? He goes, nah, I'm on the clock. I go, well, you're going to be there a while, bro. You want a beer? <laughs> and I, so, I tried not to laugh. I, I've, I've, I've been, that's somewhere that I go every single time I go to New Orleans because they have this drink. Um, it's the frozen iced coffee and Irish everybody coffee, yeah. loves it. It's, you know, it's, it's like adult ice cream type so of good. deal and you go and it's a, like i said great jukebox i play the same three songs every time i go in there the first song i play is uh the new orleans jazz vipers from yeah. one of those compilation discs and uh do you know what it means to miss new orleans 
And then I play, they got the water boys. And for some reason, they've got sugar in there. And yeah. I play helpless. I, Weird. Three songs every time. And there's a picture. Is that a picture of the Pope in there? There probably a huge, is a picture of the Pope. But it's, it's, it's not John Paul. It's not even like the, 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 the Polish guy when I was a kid. It's like 1800s pontiff in it's the bar. bar. It's an old bar, dude. It's an old bar. <laughs> It's the old, uh, it's where the media, the TV and radio used to hang out before our time in New Orleans. They used to go down there and they got a lot of uh, old uh, TV station signs up in the bar and stuff. And it's, it's a great bar. It smells like cat piss in the courtyard because there's cats all over the place. And you got to walk through that to get to the bathroom, which are fucking horrible. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Those bathrooms are horrible too. But, but that's a compliment when we're talking dive bars. That's not like a, a Yelp review. You want shitty bathrooms. Yes, for a dive bar so it's fine that's good but yeah the jukebox it there is a good one it, 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 one final thing on molly's you know my wife and this is how she looks at the world you know she's not looking like cool look at this old shit everywhere she's like eh, you know eh, you know molly's has one of the most beautiful bar backs mm -hmm. this carved wood it's so beautiful that's never been polished never been washed and they have patches from fire and police. and It's just everywhere, and it covers up. It's probably the most beautiful wood that you've ever seen, and you can't yeah. see any of it. But she's no. the one that called that out to me, and I said, you know, you're right. I bet you that would look, if you ever, and I would never want anybody to go in there and clean that up, but if you ever clean that, the back bar, what I mean is like where they store all of the alcohol. Right. <clears throat> it's phenomenal. It's a it's a piece of art back there. Somebody, it must have taken somebody a, a million hours to carve that out. It oh. looks so cool, but it's just covered in shit. Yeah, yeah, no, that'd be that'd be one of those things that you'd want. Like if you had like a big ass house or something, you want to you want that pull out of that bar and put it in your house, and it would look it would be a conversation piece. You know, that's that uh, I love Molly's. Molly's is great. The frozen Irish coffee, but I was talking about Lower Decatur Street, that whole strip right there. There's a bunch of old, scary, divey bars along there. And you want to spend some time down there, you can, you can find some trouble. I guarantee it. So we both agreed that the jukebox is a massive component of, of a dive bar. Um, so I told Jason, I said, okay, for our top five, it, it, I don't know if you, you approach it where it's like, you know, these are my five all-time favorites. I'm sitting around, I'm drinking in a bar. I, I, you know, we can listen to music whenever we want. There's something different. There's something that just hits differently about a song when you're in a bar. Right. And these maybe are not my favorite songs of all time. They, the one doesn't go in hand in hand with the other. There's just something about being in an old man bar. So I tasked him today um, with coming up with his uh, top five, favorite songs to listen to in a dive bar. So we'll get into that. Uh, first, let me talk about uh, our other great sponsor who's been on since day one with us. I, we didn't even have to convince these guys. Uh, New Orleans, sense. we've talked a lot about it here. Uh, <laughs> an amazing city loaded with a ton of history. There's a ton of great dive bars. And there was a time when real life pirates roamed the streets of the French Quarter. And you can hear these amazing tales of the smuggling and the sword fights and the cannons and the rum, piratesofthequarter.com, at Pirates of the Quarter on social media. And there's, there is, they'll go into bars too, man. There are, they're like bar crawls or what do you, is it pub crawls? Pub crawls. Bar yeah, crawls. Yeah. There's pub crawls that are tied into these things. So it's hands down the most unique walking tour in the French Quarter. It's fun. You continue partying, so you're just you're you're in New Orleans, you're in party mode, but man, you're having a great time, and you've got somebody kind of leading you around, and they're telling you real stories of things that happened in the French Quarter, and you're gonna learn a ton. You're gonna learn a ton and have a great time. Discover pirate history of New Orleans at piratesofthequarter.com. Links on the Play Pants podcast page and our YouTube page. And these guys are winning awards now, and they're they're the real deal, man. And I've been on the tour a couple of times, and I just had some friends in town not that many weeks ago, and they took it, and they just said, "Wow, it's you just you just keep partying, but you're just somebody else is kind of like taking control and leading you around. It's pretty cool." So pirates at pirates of the quarter. So Rod, when you go to when we get together, and we don't do it as much as we we have in in the past because yeah, obviously two different cities. And, um, but 
when we get into a couple of old man drinking bars, when we put on our Sammy B and Husky Pete hat. Um, we obviously sit down. Hey, hey man, being how's Husky it? Pete there, and I'm in that two man scenario, I'm Husky Pete. Go ahead. I think you figured that out. Uh, but but we'll sit there and we'll be chilling. We'll sit down, have a beer. How's the wife? How's the kids? How's your dog? How's this? How's that? How's this? And then and then inevitably. You don't hear the music going, and for us, that's that's horrible. So then, like, who's we'll going to make a move? <laughs> who's going to make a move? And it's like when you see when you watch an old western, you see the two guys standing in the street, ready to fucking draw, and you see their their finger tapping on the pistol, ready to draw, and we're like, okay. And then as soon as someone makes a move, the other guy jumps, and then, all right. Well, then we'll both go to the fucking jukebox because you can't let your boy fuck up that pick because. Yeah. What are you doing playing that song? That song's a piece of shit. And then we argue about that song. <laughs> Dude, go. If you want two dudes to play music in a bar for you, don't pick us because it'll take us an hour to pick the songs. We fucking oh, yeah, yeah. argue. I, I'm spending it's, time picking. And if there are more people at the bar or in our group, I'm no longer socializing with them. I'm really crafting no, no. what I feel is this amazing playlist. And I'm going to take this bar to the next level you're going on a journey yeah you're taking off on an airplane you're going on a fucking journey dude we're gonna hit some g's um but yeah when we get down and then say you go first and you pick a bunch of songs well don't you think that every time a new song comes on which are oh, always he could love the, amazing Jason could love the song and he's gonna tell me what a piece of shit it is and what a piece Fuck. of shit i am i know you like that song you shut your face. He does this to me every song. time. I'm not even. Gonna, I'm not even gonna let you finish your dumb statement. Every <laughs> song that comes uh, on, he's like, "Oh, who played this piece of shit?" Jesus Christ! <laughs> that girl over there. That girl over there on her bridesmaid party played this piece of shit. Oh, that girl must have played this. Like, shut up. Oh, look at the bar empty out. Fucking, cause they like music. <laughs> So, dude, it's the worst. We will fucking ruin our night by picking songs in a jukebox. And it's great. It's so much fun for us. Have you had this happen to you? I'll go in. I'm not going to. I mean, if, if the jukebox is just sitting there, I'm going to pump 10 bucks in there. I'm going to pump $15. I'll put 20 bucks in there yeah, yeah. and I'll sit there and I'll put the time in. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will. But what happens? And I won't put. I, I don't think everybody wants to hear what I want to hear. If, if the jukebox is pretty active, I'll shoot five bucks in there so I can get my tunes in there. I might, you know, if it's, the, if it's one of the, I'm not going to shit on the digital ones because I do kind of like you pay that extra dollar and you get your song next. Right. There's something great about just having those selections in there. And one of my songs that I'm going to talk about is on, I only know one jukebox and that's how I know the song. Um, and I never play it because I don't think about it because you have the internet there. Those internet jukeboxes are great. And I hate to, you know, I hate to just shit on new stuff, but don't you, you're talking about Molly's again, and there's right. 200 jukebox in there. I can, I can make magic happen with, with what's in there. Oh. I can mine it. I can mine it for the greatest stuff in there. Absolutely. That's what we do. I mean, I, if I see a jukebox and then like, I, I'm, I'm going to see it flip every page before I make a selection. So you don't want to get in line <laughs> behind me, dude. You do not want to get in line. I will go through and I'll, I'll be quick. I won't scan every song. I'll just go, okay, that album's great. That album's great. I'll come back to that. I'll, you know, I'm making my plans, but I will cultivate that. And the idea is, is you're literally got your miner's helmet on with your light and you are going to get some gold <laughs> out of that fucker every like, time. Oh, I didn't even know this song was on there. Oh, yeah, no dude, way. I found it. I yeah. found it. I because put in the time. Look, I'll tell you right now, dude, if you're going to go in there and, and I'm going to piss people off, but I don't give a shit. But if you're going to go in there and you're going to play Sweet Caroline, Don't Stop Believing, Piano Man, Sweet Home Alabama, Brown Eyed Girl or Old Time Rock and Roll. Here's what's going to happen. The FBI should show up and put you on a fucking rocket and blast you in outer space. If you play those songs in a jukebox in a dive bar, I'm sorry. They're popular songs. I get it. They're great, but they don't belong. Those should be scratched out on every CD. Play a different fucking journey song. I know the bartender hates it, but everybody fucking everybody hates jams to Sweet Caroline. I mean, I know, everybody I jams to Sweet Caroline. And it's a good song, but you know what? Go beyond. Go beyond. Work a little bit. And I don't want an internet uh, thing because there's too many choices. I want to be able to, I want to challenge. It's me versus the jukebox when I step up to that thing. I'm like, all right, here we go. Like, I'll go into a bar. Like, if, you, if I come to Houston, and that'll be a new jukebox to me. I'm going to go and introduce myself. Yes. Hey, 
What's up? I'm Jason. I'm gonna tap on a little bit, give a little love. No, no, that's a that's a relationship we're gonna have. I'm gonna I'm gonna you, I'm gonna dive inside of it. Let me tell you what's not gonna happen. Okay, <laughs> jukebox is sitting there. Okay, you know what? Guess what? You all had an opportunity. Yep. It's just been sitting there. It's been dead fucking air. Daddy's gonna go in there. I'm pumping twenty bucks in there. Okay, you now should, as you because should. it's sitting. It's sitting. Daddy's putting 20 bucks in there and I'm going to do what you just said. I'm going to mine. I'm going to find it now. Now. Little cutie patootie comes rolling up to me. Right. And, uh, and you know, she just got done doing uh, a, a couple of shots of star fuckers with her girlfriends over there. And she comes rolling up and she asked me to play Bon Jovi for her and her girlfriends living on a prayer. No. I, 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 it's not happening. No, it's it's no. This is my twenty dollars. I don't care how hot you are. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I mm -mm. don't. I'm not interested right now. I'm a eunuch. I <laughs> want to play my music. You are nothing to me. You are zero. You are less than nothing to me right now. This girl thinks she's gonna come rolling up. Okay. Rose all day, and she wants to get a couple of songs in there. I've gotten into it with people before. I've gotten yeah. into it. I wouldn't be telling the story if it only happened one time. Oh, oh, well, well, you know, we want to hear this. Do you? Guess what, Hooker? I waited. I waited and I waited and I waited. What did you do? You waited till I put money in there, and now I don't. This isn't. This isn't some little girl situation. You're going to get my milk money out of me because because you're hot and we're in fifth grade. I'm not letting you in on the jukebox. I don't care how hot you are. You're not. No, no. you can be all tuned up on Trulies. And if they get fucking brown eyed girl played and then I, and, and I'm in the bar with you, dude, and I'm sitting there and we're sitting there 20 minutes later and you're playing a great song, a great song, great song. And fucking brown eyed girl comes on. I'm going to look at you and be like, bro, we have to break up. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? What did you do? You've made a horrible, horrible mistake, Rodney. You don't play that shit. Yeah, no, you don't let that happen ever, ever. But like in that situation, if I'm in a bar and it's jammed and I get my chance on the jukebox, I will go like every third song and throw in a, not a hit. I'm not playing a hit. I'll play a minor hit. Something that's popular, but not too popular where I catch a lot of shit from you. But let, let the bar keep, you know, throw a little throw a little love our way, like your program at a radio station. I'll throw a minor hit in there and I'll go back to my shit. I'll I'll read the room. I'll read the room. I'll know my I'll know my place. You know, you got it. You can't be just be playing fucking 12 song deep on an album and going, this is great too. You gotta, you know, you yeah. gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. So Rod, you uh you threw this at me. And I want to see what your angle is because there's a thousand <laughs> angles to come at this. There's no right. This is the weirdest top five ever, I think. Um, and oh, the yeah. hardest, the hardest for sure, because of all the different ways you could look at it. So why don't you start us off so I can get a read on what the hell it is you're doing here? The it's, funny it's thing about one, this list, the funny thing about this list is these five songs are going to sit there. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Right. If we put, if you put, here's Rod's five list, you could take six, 6,000 guesses. What is this a top five of? <laughs> right. <laughs> you would yes. never put it together. Okay, so the bar that I'm talking about, this bar, Betty's. I was introduced to this song, and they since got the internet jukebox, which is great. It is great. Yeah. But when you were forced, I learned about this song, and you know what? I don't care if we get flagged by the FCC. Can you hear this? The FCC. Again. I've just got time for one more. Jim Ed Brown, Papa Top. Nice. Okay. Yeah. I hate country music, dude. That's a good song. drinking bar. That's a good dive bar <laughs> song, though. It's got that dirty feel to it. It's about you guys got a bit of a warbly voice. Perfect. Yeah, he's old. This is the old yeah. version, too. I think there's a couple of country guys that went in and did a, did a country cover of it. But Papa Top, the original one is going to be my number five. And I really felt that I needed to have a country component in, the, in there. Me, I felt like I had to have a country component in there. Uh, I'm not going to give you examples of all of them. I don't want to get, what are we going to have to, are we got to pay for that now or something? As um, long as it's like five seconds, we should be okay. Okay. Bob Marley, 
Three Little Birds. Ooh, no, that's interesting. That's interesting. You wouldn't think Bob Marley in a dive bar. You're thinking beach. And it was, anytime I associate Bob Marley, I'm thinking beach. Uh huh. But that's yeah, a good I'm one. I'm thinking this has got me just. I'm I'm drinking during the day. Oh, okay. You know, there's yeah. been a few shots. Boom. Mm -hmm. Bob Marley, Three Little Birds. I don't listen to enough Bob Marley, but let me tell you, there's a lot of jukeboxes that contain Bob Marley and the Whalers' greatest hits. Mm -hmm. So I've run into it a lot. And you're talking about making everybody happy. You're not putting on crazy deep tracks. It doesn't matter what Bob Marley song is on. That bar, it's hitting everybody. They're yep. all loving it. You can't yeah. go wrong. You can't go wrong. So Three Little Birds is my favorite Bob Marley song. Um, let's see. That's five. That's four. Three. Johnny Cash, Ring of Fire. Yeah. I mean, you can go almost any Johnny Cash tune. You can just light that up. You like, but you got to be you careful. Know. You got to be careful. Don't, don't, don't do a bunch of Johnny Cash. No. You, know, you got to go one. Maybe. But Johnny Cash, Ring of Fire. If you want to go, I walk the line. Either one. It, 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 that's a flip of a coin for me, yeah. to be honest with you. But yeah. just to have the Cash Man on in the background at the Old Man Bar, I go. Cash is Cash is going to rule. Cash is going to rule. Has to be on at some point. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> some songs have association with me now, and if you associated a song with somebody. And there's something sentimental about being in a bar. And I put this on the list. I've always really liked the song, but this was this was Dinah and her friend had this song, and Dinah had the lyrics on her arm. And we would talk about it all the time. And it was used in the movie um, uh, on the bus scene, and they're singing, "Dude, Tiny Dancer." Almost Elton John. famous. Almost famous. Almost yeah, famous. Yeah. Dude, Tiny Dancer. Because of them singing on the bus, right? I'm sitting with my beer. I'm singing it. I'm singing Absolutely. that song, and you know, and I, and I start thinking of you know a little bit of Dinah, and I just think I've always, always loved that song. And it's just taken on a different meaning. That song hits in the bar. It's like boom, and everyone's gonna love that one too. Absolutely. I feel like you're not going deep cut. And my number one, again, it's for our friend Brian. Uh, our friend Brian Steger that passed away. I used a, a lyric uh, when I talked at his funeral. Um, and I hate to be so sappy, but Van Morrison into the mystic. Oh, yeah, there you go. I am blubbering in my beer and I'm sitting at the bar and boom. Of course, I'm going to love when somebody plays Sweet Child of Mine and I'm going to love it. I'm going to love playing White Snake. And I'm going to, but these songs, if you gave me $5, I put it in there, boom, I'm going to play those five songs. Probably have to mix some stuff in between. I don't want to get too sappy back to back to back. No, no, but no, no, no. Again, it's a weird list. It's a but really it's, weird list. But it fits. All those say, I'm in a dive bar, I'm drinking. You know, a lot of times you're in a dive bar, you're either meeting some friends, you're just going to get fucked up, or you're pretty miserable and you're in there to fucking drown your sorrows. I mean, that's a dive bar's job. And that's when you start talking, not shit, but you just start talking about, What's it all mean, Jason? You know, man. What are we? What are we? What are we doing this for? You that know? girl. That girl really messed me up, man. I don't know what I was thinking, man. I don't. You know, you go down those roads, but that's what those bars are for. That's what you can smell the desperation and the depression in those bars. You can smell it. That's not the cigarette smoke. That's the fucking desperation in those bars, man. Yeah. Good so list. there was a little bit. There was. A, I mean, that pop a top, like you said, it's a drinker song. Marley's happy. Cash is in the middle, and then I kind of went to kind of sappy. Um, yeah, those are my bar songs. I like it. I like those. See, I came at it from an odd. I couldn't come up with a, a way to do the list. I couldn't. I think like of Sweet a way Caroline. To do I like Sweet Caroline. I, I like that. I thought it was too obvious. I wouldn't put it in a top five, right. but I like if that's coming on. I'm jamming. So my top five songs. Rod, I, could, I couldn't come up with just five because this is going to change every day. Because what happens is it depends on my mood when I go in the place. Yes. It depends on if you're with me or not because I got to really think about it because I know I'll catch shit if the songs yes. suck. It, it just depends on a lot of factors. It, it, so I kind of went at this one as if I walked into a bar and I read the room. I will always read the room. I'll look at the people. Okay, what is this guy here for? Why is that guy here? Why is this person here? Why is that person here? And then I will cultivate my list a lot of times. I'll throw in some songs. So, for instance, number five, Van Halen's You're No Good. Okay, obscure song. You're No Good. I'm thinking that one is going to be dedicated. First, it was a great fucking song. 
It's so badass. It's not obscure because it's a cover. It's a cover, so, but it's nobody plays it. It doesn't get played. Great on the mid-tempo radio. song though. But it's like, you know what? There's gonna be that dude in there who is having chick problems. He's gonna fucking start shaking his head. And I will play that song. When it comes on, I will look around and eventually I will see a dude shaking his head. Fuck, that's right. She is no good. Fuck that. Thanks, bro. Yep. This is really helping me with my whore situation. That's the one. And then, <laughs> then I'm gonna go right out of that one. I'm gonna go smoking right into rock candy from Montrose. Wow. Because I'm gonna go, there's gonna be some girls in there, and they're never used. It's a stripper song. It's a great, great stripper song. And I'm like, okay, there's going to be some girls in there, and they're not going to be the super hot ones, but they're going to want to dance, and that one's going to bring out the stripper. The inner stripper will come out from Montrose's Rock Candy. Can we bank that for maybe a future top five stripper Absolutely. songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll totally do that. And then a lot of times – I guess I know what's going to be on your list now. Because of uh, it being an old man drinking bar, you know, if you don't play a Rolling Stones song, you you failed at some point. And I'm not saying it's going to okay. be top five. I'm not saying it's okay. going to be top five. It's just got to be on the, your list. It, and I picked Midnight Rambler because it's all about a badass. It's fucking questionable. And it's bad. And it's just it, that yes. song fits a dive bar so well. And that's just kind of hate, like, bam. I hate giving you any sort of approval on this because of the shit you've given me. No, but... I would, that's a great one. I wrote down uh, Stones Gimme Shelter is my favorite Stone song. So it's a million Stones. Too. Um, and I know you're coming from it. You probably play that song. I, I don't hear it that much. And man, Stones Gimme Shelter, but Midnight Rambler is good too. It's just, and it's got that harmonica. It's just a different song. It's, again, we're not looking at hits here, man. We're just not. Um, I'll, depending on the night, and this one's a weird one, and this one's a little bit happy, but it's kind of the lyrics are fucked up and weird. I'll play Spirit in the Sky from Norman Greenbaum. It's just a, it's talking about, you know, going on up to the spirit in the sky, old 60s tune. I know the song. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fucking, it's a weird song. It, it gets people like turning their heads, looking around going, what the fuck? That's but your pop a, a top. But it's a pop, it's a popular, <laughs> it's a popular, uh, it's, it's an up-tempo song and people are like, okay. And then if I want to fucking lay it out there and be like, all right, it's time for shots. It's time for shots. We're going in hard. If I got, if I know coming up, I going to be doing shots or I got to convince people to do shots. Born to Raise Hell from Motorhead is coming on. We're going to get what? loud. Born oh, to Raise dude. Hell from Motorhead. That was, a, that was a nuke. Yep. I'm dropping bombs, baby. But I have it. But I'm called. I'm thinking. I'm not just thinking about songs. I'm thinking about, okay, in about 20 minutes, I'm going shots. So I want to ramp up the shots. And then Motorhead comes on. I've already started ordering. When I know my song before Motorhead comes on, I'm ordering shots. Because once Born to Raise Hell comes on, we're snapping them back. And you can't not do your shot and be fired up when that song comes on. So, and again, that will change tomorrow. But for right now, I was thinking dive bar, that's going to, that's going to cultivate, I'm cultivating in there. See, see the, the amount of effort we put into these. I wait, I took you through my mini process. Of you're going to need, you, let me look at me. You more than me are going to need an internet jukebox. You agree with me on that. For your picks, a lot, yeah. Oh no, these aren't. You're not gonna around. find. There's you're not, not gonna find that stuff in a jukebox. So I'll, I'll get the stones. I'll I if I'm real, <laughs> real lucky, I'll get I'll get the uh, I'll I'll get the uh, I'll get one of the Montrose or I'll get I'll get Van Halen. Yeah, Van Halen too can show up on some greatest hits and shit, or, or they'll be in there. But yeah, I'm not gonna get all these uh, at once. There's no way, unless it's the fucking coolest bar ever. Right. You know, I have a hard time finding Van Morrison into the Mystic. I have a hard time. No, I don't play that every time. Again, it's got to hit me at the right time. You and I were drinking a beer. Maybe we're on 10 or 11, and then somebody says, oh, yeah, man, I really miss Brian Stager. Okay. Van Morrison into the Mystic. I miss my boy, too. You know, boom. You know, and that's more – I start missing him on the third or fourth beer when I'm in New Orleans. Correct. But I kind of took you through the process, at least a mini version of my process. Like, I'll read the room. I'll look what's happening. Okay, if there's right. a bunch of chicks in there, and they're, they're, they're actually drinking real drinks – not fucking Trulies and, and doing shots of, you know, butter makers or whatever they fucking call them. Um, I'm going to find a way to get the bar to move a little bit. I want to I want to see a reaction out of my songs. I mean, there's so much that goes into it because we don't get to pick fucking songs usually. So it's our time in a bar like that. We get to fucking play some shit. I'm not playing the same shit that everyone's going to play. That's another reason when Susie Rottencrotch rolls up to me, I'm not, I don't get to do this. I don't get to play whatever I want. Right now, I put my money in there and I get to play whatever I want. Fuck off. You're so, not, I'm not playing even one of your dumb songs. 
Live in La Vida Loca? After my 20 are done, then go ahead, have at it. You tell when's the last time I went out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Wait, hey, Mambo number five. No, sorry. I got to fucking put on some white snakes. Sorry. A little bit of Monica in my life. <laughs> so, the, <clears throat> so the pressure to pick. A, 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 and, and, and if we got friends with us, say it's me, you, and like another dude or a couple other dudes, if they even consider going to the jukebox we just look at him and go sit the fuck down oh yeah yeah sit yeah the, sit the fuck down you're not allowed you, there, and who would want to because we're gonna murder you we're gonna murder you when you're when your songs come on you might as well just forget it dude it's over you're never gonna get a, a song even if it's the greatest song we're gonna give you shit and that's not to say we don't bust out some crazy acdc the crazy guns oh, yeah. and roses i mean we're gonna pump but it's not gonna be the same song we're gonna dig a little deeper than the average cat that's we why I like have, we have never done a show on one topic. The whole podcast today was dive bars. Yeah. We've never done that before. I told you when we first started, yeah. we Texas may have come up with a topic that we excel in expertise. Dive you bars. Sent, you sent me a text. Here's the text I got at uh, an hour before uh, showtime. You said, Seeing the whole episode being about dive bars, you watch, and I said, "Yeah, was thinking the same." <laughs> <laughs> we just blew off all. You know what? We just go and, and like take and um, scrape up all the shit that just never makes it to the podcast. We could do a, a ten shows of the stuff we throw to the ground. Oh, I know. know? There, I had like five, six other things that I wanted to do, but I. It's National Dive Bar Day. If you did not hear that part of the podcast, <laughs> it's July seventh. It was a Seagrams Seagrams thing. And it Just goes fucking with say Seagrams. Are you reading that? Jesus Christ. What do you do for a living? <laughs> seven and seven. Today is seven, seven made the by Seagrams. Seven and seven with a double lime is kind of my go-to drink. If I want to look cool in front of people, I will order that. <laughs> oh, uh, shit. Why don't you get back to your bars. vacation, dude? Why don't we do some final thoughts here? Final thoughts, dude. When you go, and we were going to talk about this, but we're going to save this. I want to just tease. We're going to throw a little tease out. Maybe we can get this on the next episode, Rod. Is that when you're at the beach, you know what you see a lot of? You see a lot of bodies, okay? And a lot of times, and, and I'm included, you don't want to see them. But people don't care, and they should let their freak flag fly when they're at the beach, man. Don't, don't be wearing shirts. Just get out. Get wild. Who gives a shit, right? Big, small, it doesn't matter. You see a lot of tattoos, right? And I don't have any tattoos, and I know you have them. And this is a topic for another day. I just want to tease this, okay? But you start questioning, what the fuck were you thinking when you got that tattoo? <laughs> right there's just like think it through and you brought up a great point uh, a few episodes back about tattoos and we weren't even talking about tattoos you just mentioned hey you know if you're 25 and you're covered from the chin down with tattoos maybe go out and live some life first then get some more tattoos right and that was basically what you said like yeah don't go full sleeve by the time you're 19 because bro you've got some more living to do save some space for some shit down the road yeah. So you just you just see some really not thought out bad tattoos, and I love a good tattoo. Not on me, but I love looking at them. They're cool as shit. So we were talking about uh, Pete Davidson from Saturday Night Live, who just went on a tear of two years of getting every shitty tattoo. I mean, it was self destructive. He was doing it, right. and I just couldn't figure it out. Every episode of SNL that he showed up, there was something new somewhere, and he's in the process of getting them removed now. And it's 10 times more painful than getting a tattoo is what I heard. Yeah. And it takes like a month to, 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 to heal. But I, I just want to throw that out there that we're, we're going to go down to the tattoo road probably cool. uh, at a future date. But that, I just wanted to say, I would want to bring that up because I'm at the beach and man, you, you go to a water park. You really see some fucked up tattoos, dude. Yeah, I mean, you do. Just bad decisions being made. But so we'll get you into that. How old they are. You can tell almost how old they are. It's like, Oh, tribal. Okay. Boom. You're looking at a 45 year old band. With a tribal right. tattoo. Right, right, right. So that's <laughs> it's not a final thought, but I just want to kind of tease the next episode. Rod, final thought. Uh, my final thought is because I had an I, I had a feeling that we were gonna do nothing but dive bar, I was going to leave with a lyric. And I am the worst when it comes to song lyrics. They don't resonate with me. Most of them don't resonate with me. I'm, I'm a dopey drummer, and I'm more about the, the rhythm, I guess, of the song. But there is a great song from our good friends from Buffalo, the Goo Goo Dolls, and the song is called Broadway. 
And it's my favorite Johnny lyric of all time. See the young man sitting in the old man's bar waiting for his time to die. It's a little sad to go out and it's a little morose to, to, to go out on that. But that line and everything about the Goo Goo Dolls, they're still as polished as they are. There's still some grit with those dudes. There's still a little grit. You wouldn't know it if you didn't, if you didn't come from where they came from. Right. And they really are on the outside, very, very polished sounding dudes. But that line represents where Jason and I come from. And it's just see the young man sitting in the old man's bar waiting for his time to die. And kind of had a little something with maybe the Goo Goo Dolls getting out of Buffalo and, you know, and they still, they're so good. Robbie's still there, but it was just one of those lyrics that really hit hard with me because I kind of thought I was just going to be going and swinging a hammer my whole life. And then going and five o'clock going and sitting in an old man bar until eight o'clock and then wash, rinse, repeat. And, uh, and that can happen to people and it can get a little sad and, uh, and I'm glad it didn't happen. But that lyric has always been one of my favorites. Goo Goo Dolls Broadway, one of my favorite goo songs. And that was my final thought just to keep the whole damn thing dive bar. <laughs> Total dive bar, man. It was a great episode. And now like, and I think we covered it pretty well. I'm sure we're missing shit, but, uh, I want, you know what would be cool is if someone finds, if you're in a dive bar <clears throat> and you see that jar of formaldehyde eggs, <laughs> please, for the love of God, will you take a picture of it and send it to us or post it on our social media pages and just say where it is. Because someone's still got to be rolling when he's in an old roadhouse on the side of an interstate somewhere or something like that. And what did we forget? Like we talked about all the great key components to a dive bar. There's got to be something else that we forgot that like, okay, you're right. That needs to be a part of it. What are your songs that, that you, what are your go-to songs when you're in a bar? I mean, there's, there's so much that you can kind of add to this. Right. And right. what are your favorite dive bars? Wherever you go, what are your favorite dive bars? We want to hear all of that stuff. So when you see us on social media and you see us, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Boom. We'll be asking you, hey, man, tell us about what you like. Where are your favorite dive bars? Because just like we're kind of I'm watching everybody's lists on music and stuff, and I'm going yeah, and I'm listening yeah. to some great songs. I'll go check these places out, man. You know, I'll go check them out. But wherever you are, man, tell us what your favorite dive bar is. You know, at the end of the day, Rod, this podcast is great because we sure we do the podcast. It takes a little bit of work, but I've gotten introduced to so many great movies music this is really benefiting us more than i think anybody I know. else man that's what makes this so much fun because we get to learn so much shit i can't tell you how much shit i've learned in the last well 15 episodes now you know 15, 15 weeks holy shit i didn't think this would get past four i gotta be honest well, Somebody thank you guys so much for checking this out and yeah. subscribe and rate it do you rate it do you yeah do we've you actually have ratings okay so we need you to rate it I need you to share it with people. I, I, you gotta, we gotta get this out there. We gotta get some more people on this, but subscribing all and all that great stuff and commenting that means the world to us. And we'll get, we'll, we'll see every single comment that you leave us. Yeah. Yeah. We, we try to read it and respond to most of them. And um, you know, this is not, we're not doing this for any other reason than we just want to fucking do it. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're just want to do this. So anytime someone else contributes, like the guys that are making the pictures of us putting our heads on different bodies and shit is fucking <laughs> brutal. Dude, I sit and just piss my pants at half of the shit that people are sending back. But it's, it's all good natured stuff. Like this is not, we're not going to be pissing on anybody really. We're not going to get mad about stuff. This is more just, it's called play pants for a reason. You know, exactly. it's just hanging out. It's all it's all about. So let's end this thing because uh, I got to go back to the beach. <laughs> yeah, go to vacation. I got to go track my kid down. Guys, thank you so much for checking these out, man. Let's go. It's time. Find us wherever you listen to podcasts. See us on our YouTube channel and follow our social media pages at Play Pants Pod.